Has your thought ever been infected by nominalism or modernism? If so, in what ways? This question was a Facebook post from Parker Zerbach from the Catholic podcast Catholicism in the Car. The word choice here, infect, is an interesting one. And I think is illustrative of the fact that Catholics don't simply disagree with nominalism. Catholics fear nominalism. And no, I don't mean fear in the most common sense of the word. I think about fear more like a phobia. The analog that comes to mind is America post-World War I and then again post-World War II with the Red Scare. Or in this case, the nominalistic scare. In this video, I'd like to explore why I think Catholics, especially the more traditional-minded Catholics, are indeed experiencing a nominalistic scare, and why they really have nothing to fear at all. Let's begin. One Facebook post from a single Catholic podcast isn't necessarily proof of a widespread nominalistic scare. So let's look at some other Catholics and Catholic organizations and see how they talk about nominalism. Published in 1978 in the Catholic journal Nova Ad Vetera, Occam and the Decline of Moral Theology is about how the nominalism of William of Occam leads to a displacement of happiness, love, and all virtues from their central position in morality. William of Occam, of Occam's Razor fame, was a pioneer of nominalism. And the original French title of this essay is Moral Theology at the End of the Middle Ages, Nominalism. So we see that nominalism has been around since at least the 1970s, and I would argue that it's been around since significantly before that, perhaps as early as 1864, see the syllabus of errors for perhaps the seeds of nominalism phobia. And I will bring up an example from the 1940s in a little bit, but nominalism phobia is very much so not out of style. In many ways, nominalism had an important hand in destroying your worldview. So when we talk here about the era of eras of nominalism, another quick distinction I want to point out, not necessarily the errors of nominalists. Sometimes thinkers have a worldview where they themselves don't see the logical consequences of their own worldview. That was Dr. John Cudaback, a professor of philosophy at Christendom College speaking at an event put on by the ICC, or the Institute for Catholic Culture, in 2017. The ICC isn't just some random Catholic organization. Among the ranks of the ICC instructors are numerous PhDs, people like Michael Behe and Peter Kreeft, bishops, and apologists like Tim Staples and Carlo Broussard. An even more contemporary example can be found in this 2021 Credo podcast article about nominalism and how nominalism leads to the, quote, denial of truth itself. This article quotes heavily from a 1948 book, Ideas Have Consequences, by Richard Weaver. Richard Weaver sounds a lot like Jordan Peterson and Jonathan Pajot, who both love talking about how some things are truer than true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth, which makes it way more true than just true. It's a whole different kind of true. Or symbolically true. I would diagnose both Peterson and Pajot with nominalism phobia as well. Why are some Catholics so seemingly averse to nominalism? Well, it would appear that Catholics, based on the way that they talk about nominalism, are afraid of the fruits of nominalism. Catholics think that a more nominalistic a society gets, the more the morality of that society will degrade. Modernity, after all, is a direct result of nominalism. And things like the supposed degeneracy of divorce and remarriage, eating meat on Ash Wednesday, the freedom to marry who you see fit, and the freedom to express your gender however you would like, are all examples of things that arise from nominalism, right? 
I'd like to challenge that not all of these things actually come from nominalism. I think that modern gender theory is actually not nominalistic at all. It's almost the opposite. Modern gender theory seems almost platonically real, or at least moderately real. Womanhood is this real thing that people can truly partake in. It isn't just simply some collection of physical traits that we fictionally refer to as femininity or womanhood or anything like that. In fact, I see tons of parallels between modern gender theory and transubstantiation. The substance of a thing can change while the accidents remain unchanged. The substance of maleness leaves a male body, or at least a body that has XY chromosomes, however you would like to define that, and the substance of femaleness enters the body. In the same way that the substance of the bread leaves the bread, and the substance of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ enters the bread. And lastly, I just find it super implausible at the face of it to think that people actually live their lives according to nominalism. The general public spends absolutely no time at all thinking about the details of the existence of concreta and abstracta. And among those who do, I very highly doubt that any of them would list their belief in the existence or non-existence of abstracta as a motivating factor for just about anything in their lives. Are there perhaps other reasons why Catholics are opposed to nominalism beyond the moral fruits argument? I think there are, and I will name two, a historical reason and a theological reason. First, the historical reason. Luther was a nominalist. Written essays have been published about how Luther's disagreements with the Catholic Church were driven in part by his nominalism, and video essays have been published about how the errors of Protestantism lead into liberalism, very Jordan Peterson-y. I think sometimes that Catholics oppose nominalism without even calling out nominalism by name, without sometimes even knowing what nominalism is. Like when people critique the expression that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which is a nominalistic idea at the core of it. Second, the theological reason. Catholic dogma relies on realism being true, at least to some extent. At the Council of Trent, transubstantiation is couched in pretty realist language. The Holy Synod teaches and openly and simply professes that in the August Sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, after the consecration of the bread and wine, our Lord Jesus Christ, true God and man, is truly, really, and substantially contained under the species of those sensible things. He be, in many other places, sacramentally present to us in his own substance by a manner of existing which, though we can scarce, scarcely express it in words, yet can we, by the understanding illuminated by faith, conceive, and we ought most firmly to believe, to be possible unto God. So I think that Catholics fear that nominalism, if true, disproves or makes impossible or makes nonsensical transubstantiation. That is to say, that is to say, that if substances don't exist, then transubstantiation makes no sense. Catholics can't make sense of transubstantiation unless it is couched in these Aristotelian terms, which nominalism rejects. Catholics wish to avoid this conundrum, and so Catholics, by and large, reject nominalism. I should note that there are some Catholics who seem to be working out understandings of transubstantiation that are more nominalism friendly. The Jesuits are doing interesting work on this front, but this appears to be not so well received by the more conservative and more orthodox Catholics. Wait a minute. Don't most Catholics believe that all truth is God's truth? Most Catholics will agree with St. Thomas Aquinas, when Aquinas says that people ought to follow their conscience, even if they become convinced that the Catholic Church is false. But then in the same breath, many of those Catholics will say something like this. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting a skepticism here. There's always this incredible balance. Have confidence in what, we, in what we do know. Don't become a skeptic. But at the same time, always humility. Always be careful. Always be willing to see that we haven't seen well enough. That was Dr. Cutterback again from the Institute for Catholic Culture. 
have confidence that realism is true, don't become skeptical of realism. Just trust me, bro. The problem of causal inertness of abstracta? I've never met that man in my life. Occam's razor? Don't need it. This is what I'm referring to when I talk about the undercurrent of anti-intellectualism within the Catholic Church. Catholics, I'll urge you to not be afraid of nominalism. If indeed all truth is God's truth, then you have nothing to fear. Consider the arguments on both sides. Be skeptical. Use the brain that God gave you, and then come to your own conclusions. Even if nominalism is some deeply insidious thing, wouldn't you rather believe the truth than the comfortable lie? At about four minutes into his ICC speech, Dr. Cutterback says, you won't bump into people who claim to be nominalists. And I'd like to change that. And I'm not the only person who'd like to change that too. The Real Atheology team left a comment on my last nominalism video. They joke about the moral fruits of nominalism saying, but don't you know that as the Thomas tell us, nominalism is responsible for the total fall of Western civilization and only through reading Phaser's scholastic metaphysics and David Odeberg's real essentialism can we regain a correct understanding of the true, the good, and the beautiful? Then he adds, seriously though, as a fellow nominalist, I really enjoyed your video. You may enjoy the book Priority Nominalism, which is a good defense of a rather extreme and robust account of nominalism. At the time of filming, I can proudly say that I have begun Priority Nominalism. I have read the entire introduction and the whole preface. I'm looking forward to reading more about Ostrich Nominalism, which I currently understand to be opposed to Trope Nominalism and Resemblance Nominalism. That's all a topic for another video, though. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. This was my first attempt at making something a little bit more documentary style. Do you guys like the format? Let me know. And as always, I look forward to the discussion down below. Thanks, everybody.